Welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights, where we invite leading minds and game changers with incomparable experience and unique knowledge to come on our light-hearted yet informative show. We aim to help business leaders and the wider community gain insights, grasp opportunities, see behind and beyond spotlights so we can get the full picture, dream bigger and achieve more together. I'm your host for this episode. My name is Nick Chen, a lawyer and lawmaker. Friday Beyond Spotlights is honoured and pleased to present to you our guest today, Professor Francis Chen, the Dean of Faculty of Medicine at the Chinese University of Hong Kong since 2014. His strong ingenuity and dare to dream the impossible to help the next generation of doctors in Hong Kong, his contribution to medical research has been recognised worldwide with many national and international awards. Professor Chen, welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights. Hi, Nick. Thank you for your very kind invitation. May I call you Francis? Yes, please. Thank you. COVID-19 has wreaked havoc around the world, costing lives and millions of people mm. are suffering from long COVID. Yet multi-billion dollar pharma giants and developed wealthy countries are hoarding or seemingly hoarding access to vaccines. Uh, what can we do about this? Um, is it too big an issue for medical school, medical center, or even a group of doctors? to be the David versus the Goliath? Using big data analysis, we've come up with an oral probiotic formula that's been shown to, number one, enhance our immunity against COVID by improving the antibody response with vaccination. We can also reduce the chance of having complications when you get COVID. Recently, we also come up with a new test with just a small amount of poo we can make an accurate diagnosis of long COVID. So I believe as individuals, we may be able to contribute to this COVID pandemic only if we are willing to unleash the magic in our hearts. With the uh, lower birth rates uh, and baby boomers entering into um, you know, the silver hair market, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, how is that changing the um, world demographics and the evolving needs of public and private medical care? Uh, and perhaps uh, the way you would teach students, uh, equip them as they go into the world. So what we need to teach our students and to prepare the society is that we need to have plans to achieve healthy aging. And importantly, with our innovations, can we achieve anti-aging? Anti-aging, what do you mean by that? Now, uh, we all think about Prevention is better than cure. We right. should try to prevent the onset of diseases with healthy lifestyle so that we can have more healthy aging. So what actually is aging? Aging is not just about having more white hair. Aging is some kind of, you can say, wear and tear of your genetic material. But the genetic material in our body is really some kind of very interesting interaction with the environment. Mm. If the environment is a better environment, I'm sure this aging process can be stopped and sometimes can even be reversed. Like myself, I am um, a researcher in the gut microbiome, which is the second set of genome in our body. I can tell you, our whole body genome is only about 1% of the total genome in our body. 99% of the genome belongs to the gut bacteria. Oh. So if we can modify our gut bacterial genomes, there's always hope that we can reverse this aging process. As the world changes, how are we adapting at the school, uh, the faculty of medicine, in the way we teach students and prepare them for the life ahead? Right. Now, conventional medical school focuses on knowledge and skill transfer. Well, this is bread and butter in terms of the vocational training aspects. But I believe in order to prepare our next generation young doctors for this global challenge, they need to have an international perspective. Mm -hmm. They need to have an innovative mindset and they need to have a very strong sense of humanity. Mm. This is all medicine about. Mm. So in fact, some 10 years ago in CHK, we have started this, what we call the GPS program. GPS stands for the Global Physician Leadership Stream uh, we want to nurture a generation of young doctors who have these kind of attributes mm. in order to face the challenges that we are going to have in the years to come. Uh, Francis, uh, Hong Kong is of course a leading financial centre in the world, mm -hmm. uh, but I hear your friends are talking about they want to bank with you. 
<laughs> you know, at CHK, mm. I hear you're starting two banks. Are they virtual banks or what kind of banks? Now I'm advocating, actually not only advocating, but I'm actually doing mm. um, these two very big projects. One is to develop a biobank right. of important bodily specimens. Mm. Um, the other is a, a pool bank. A pool bank? Pool, Did pool, I pool. Right? Okay. Yes, pool, pool bank. Okay, pool, pool now, bank. Now, bio bank, I guess bio bank is not that um, uh, new, especially for people who are living in Western countries. Mm. Because nowadays, if you want to answer very important questions, yes. you can't really do simple telephone survey. You can't really do a study of uh, several hundred, even several thousands of people won't be good enough. Mm. You need to have a, a big bank of clinical data as well as bio samples like blood specimens, cancer biopsy specimens. With all these specimens, you'll be able to tell over time whether there will be any changes, whether your intervention will be effective. Mm. So this kind of bio bank, which is currently lack in Hong Kong, it's really a matter of priority. And I've been doing this uh, for, for quite some years in collaboration with quite a number of big hospitals in the Greater Bay Area. So this is going to be one of the biggest bio bank, not only in Asia, but also in the world. We are collecting mm. what we call a 100K modern baby cohort for 10 years. This pool bank, yes. this is even more interesting. Mm. Um, I'm sure you heard about cord blood. Yes. Um, people, when the kids were born, Often, they were tempted to save up the cord blood, mm. hoping that this cord blood will one day be life-saving if mm. anything serious happening. Mm. But the thing is, um, now we know that our pool collects vast amount of information. As I said, the pool contains 99% of the bodily genome. Mm. And with such information, we will be able to predict your future health and also we know that for kids, their pool is much healthier than when we become adults. Mm. So if we are able to save their healthy stool samples, mm. we may one day be able to use these healthy stool samples to treat the diseases in the future. Mm. Because with time goes on, the diversity of the stool bacteria the good bacteria will become less and less, mm. will be replaced by harmful bacteria. Mm. So we really want to save up this healthy pool so that in the future we can use this pool to put it back into their guts to restore the balance. <laughs> um, is Hong Kong the right place to be for businesses to be here, researchers, inventors to be here, to uh, look into uh, conducting medical research and commercialization? My answer is definitely positive. Because Hong Kong, we've got first class healthcare system. Uh, over the past two, three decades, in fact, our clinical research, our clinical trials is really number one in the world. Mm. And therefore, we do have the infrastructure to carry out important clinical trials, whether we're talking about clinical trials initiated by local researchers or those trials um, sponsored by big farmers. And also with this Greater Bay Area, we will have the support and the infrastructure from our neighborhood so that we will be able to not only carry out clinical trials, but also to um, transform our innovations into products that can be available in the market. Francis, we are living in a 5G world. Uh, the city is getting smarter. Uh, we'll be living in a very well-developed smart city soon. Uh, how is the medical profession adopting technology in hospital care and, and, you know, and beyond. Can you share a few developments with us? Hong Kong's healthcare system is really world class. Uh, we have got an excellent healthcare system and Bloomberg has classified our healthcare system as the most efficient in the world for several years. And um, apart from our high level of medical care, we also adopt very state-of-the-art technology so that may be one of the reasons why the life expectancy for the Hong Kong people is the longest in the world. Mm. So in the future, I believe combining with 5G technology, we will be able to deliver more efficient and precision care to our patients in Hong Kong. Francis, uh, with more technology um, and with, you know, under the COVID-19 situation, 
there seems to be a lot of development in telehealth. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you think uh, the future would be like for us in enjoying telehealth? I believe telehealth will be a very important tool, especially for those who have difficulty in accessing healthcare, especially those who are disabled, those who have a very limited um, kind of support by the family or other friends. The other thing is we can make use of telemedicine to teach and to train those doctors who are living in kind of some other places, mm. like in those remote areas. And importantly in Hong Kong, our medical robotic system is very rapidly developing. And I believe one day we may be able to use 5G, not only to train doctors to do kind of surgery, but also to use 5G to do remote surgery in some other remote areas. So this is a distinct possibility in the near future. Uh, what advice uh, would you give to young people who are interested in saving lives, improving quality of life as a doctor, researcher, entrepreneur in the medical and life science fields? I'm looking for those students who really have the compassion for the poor and sick. Uh, I always believe if we identify ourselves not only with the powerful people, but also with those who don't have power, then life will become more beautiful. Thank you, Francis. We'll be right back after this break.